Michael hovered above the icy waters. He could see the snow to the north and the white shores to the south. But the vessel below him could not. Her passengers only saw ocean without hope. They had been nearly two months at sea, and the winds of winter drew nigh. As one hardship after another befell them, those whose eyes were open to see the Messiah prayed. Slowly, Michael drew power from their prayer, and there was nothing Mystery or the Dragon could do to stop the vessel. This ship carried two groups of pilgrims. The vision and its funding came from a group of messians, but the skill and labor to make the voyage came from another group. Outwardly, they rejected the heaven, but among them were some who practiced witchcraft in secret. When they made trouble, the messians prayed and the workers repaired. All the while, it was Michael who kept watch. They were tired and ill. Indeed, land was not far to the west, but as Michael grew larger over the horizon, mystery looked up from her small fortress to the south. Michael was coming toward her, and with him a nearly endless supply of prayer with which he might even supplant her. Enraged and provoked, mystery went out to confront Michael above the northern seas. What do you bring, Mystery asked. You ask as if you were blind and cannot see yourself. Half of those passengers already serve me. Your little petty party can't make a difference. Turn back, and the other half give me the power I need to keep you in check. You're on another conversion mission, you and your proselytizing. So you agree you're lacking numbers. I'm actually not coming to destroy your fortress, Mystery. Clever words to make me turn a blind eye. What do you say your purpose is, then? I'm releasing the message of the sun from your institutions. My institutions have only ever helped the words of your precious little message. The son should thank me for all I've helped him with. If your institutions were so helpful to the message, then why did you lead your clerics to persecute people who sought to read it for themselves? People need my help. Most of them can't read. You don't want them to get the wrong idea from ignorance, do you? You could have released them all to learn reading, but your clerics wouldn't teach literacy either. Always criticizing, but you weren't leading anything. Mystery sneered at Michael in her feminine serpentine form, as if she had silenced the Archine Prince for the first time. But she had not. Here, the message will no longer be your slave, and the people who carry it will no longer be slaves of illiteracy. You're trying to establish a nation of readers. I'm not trying, Mystery. I am doing it. And these shall be the first, both the righteous and the unrighteous. All of them shall read and write. Science will advance, and people will live without fear of your disease. Oh, I'll find more ways to kill them, Mystery grimaced. I'll use your science to invent new diseases while you use science to cure them. It's all pointless. If it is pointless, then why come out to meet me? Ha! Ah, you are attacking me after all. You just want me to turn back, then you will crush my fortress to the south. If you think that you can escape the reach of my clerics, you are mistaken. Say what you want, Mystery, but this vessel shall land at its appointed place. Not if I have anything to say about it. With those words, Mystery began to swell a great storm to the south, drawing wind from the north. The vessel sped up, and Mystery pushed waves with her tail that would drive it into the rocks where she waited, licking her lips in anticipation of swallowing the ship whole like a hungry leviathan at sea. When the humans aboard the vessel spotted the approaching rocks, Michael unsheathed his sword. Just a little bigger, he said as the messians aboard prayed. The plume of prayer above the vessel mushroomed bigger and bigger. Then, at the last possible moment, he shot out a beam of light from his sword into the cloud, which then erupted with a silent explosion of brilliant lights flying every which way. The winds changed, and the storm mystery had created reversed, blowing the vessel toward the north. 
a giant angelic hand came from behind and grabbed the vessel just before it hit the rocks. The vessel harnessed the new wind, turned, and barely avoided running aground. You humans like to wait until the last moment to come through, don't you? Michael chuckled to himself, sheathing his sword. I wouldn't object if just once you gave me some prayer to answer a little sooner, but the suspense keeps us on our dorsals, I guess. Ha! Mystery screamed at Michael, turning back at him with a maniacal scowl. You'll never complete your voyage if you turn back now. I give you the wind you need to finish your travels, then you turn around. Wasn't it your aim to supplant me? Now all of a sudden you want me to supplant you? Or you only pretend to help like a slave master feeding his slaves. Of course I enslave humans. Without my help, they would die. I just saved them from certain death at the hand of your help. They weren't going to die. I would have dealt with them. You don't fool me, mystery. You offer help, but your goal is to enslave and devour. Michael flapped his wings to catch up to the vessel, escorting it slowly north, back up the coast toward land. What about your destination to the south? That was where the passengers thought they were going. That's where you thought they were going. Now that you have made your intentions known, I don't need to guide them any farther south. Their final destination was always going to be the cape in the shape of a fish hook. And they already know what that looks like. You're changing plans because I defeated you. You're just trying to save face. Well, I'm not scared of you. You should be, Mystery. You should be very scared. As of today, slavery has been defeated in the North. The message has been freed to the humans. The humans have been freed from your institutions. Even the wicked who practice witchcraft will receive justice from the governments they compact here with the righteous. No! I'll taint your justice with needless witch hunts. Then they will return to slavery. No nation is built without it. How do you think I built Egypt? I have come here to free slaves and build a better nation. It's over, mystery. Go back to the Northeast. No! I'll establish a new order of slaves and build a stronger nation with which I will defeat you and your precious little group of book readers. Mystery slithered off across the sea to the southeast. Michael looked over at the vessel, which had dropped anchor and already dispatched a small boat rowing toward a large rock on the coast. It's beginning, a deep voice came from above. Elon, Michael said, looking up. The barrier around that cape is great to hold on to, Eatland chimed back with a hearty chuckle in his belly, especially when you've got to grab a wooden sailboat with your other hand. I'll take your word for it, Long Arms. The message has safely come to your shores. Look who came along for the ride. You didn't have to bring the stowaways. Do you mean the Messians or the craftsmen? Both, I guess. Both of the towering Archine laughed. But, Elon continued, they are evangelists at heart. And it's good for them to learn to love every bit as much as it is for them to learn to build. They'll need the skills for the nation that follows. Only the sun can establish a perfect kingdom. Until then, spread that message as far as you can. Bring justice anywhere you can, no matter how many times the fallen con them. Keep them going. It won't be long now. No, Elon said, shaking his head. It won't be long now. Package delivered. I leave them in good hands. Michael turned and flew north as Elon stood on the waters and kept watch. Now, Elon thought to himself... I just need to get them to that large lake a little way inland. Who's a good spitfire to blaze the trail? Someone who doesn't like boundaries. How about that Billington boy, Francis? I just hope the good governor has it in his heart to listen to the younger generation. No one ever said this would be easy, 